You gotta wait your turn, Silly. Hold on. I know. I know. I'm just so eager. Ooh. There you go. No, no. Go lay down, baby. Let me feed them. I know. I know. You'll be, it'll be your turn shortly. It'll be your turn shortly. We just gotta wait. I know. I know. Oh my god, you gotta wait. Oh my goodness. I know. You're just so excited. I don't, my face is not giving a bottle, silly. Oh man, so hungry. So ravenous. Here you go, just lay here. And be cute and let me pet you while your brother eats. Yes, I know, I know, I know. You'll get to eat shortly. Just wait. Just wait, I know you're reaching so hard. Oh, I know, little one, I know. Just wait, it's almost your turn. It's almost your turn. You're not gonna get anything out of my finger. You're not gonna get anything out of that. See, there's nothing there. It's a finger. I know, I know, it's a finger. It's not, you're not gonna get anything out of it. Right. Oh, oh, you want more now? You want more now? You gotta wait your turn now. Are you my plan? Unfortunately, as you can see, <laughs> I am bottle feeding Sophie's babies. So it's been a couple weeks since the last vlog and Unfortunately, Sophie started to reject the little blue and white buckling. And I don't know if it's because she just couldn't produce enough for the two of them or what, but we decided to make the rough call and go ahead and pull both of them off of her and put her back out at the pasture. She's been doing great. Um, the babies are, as you can see on, on the bottle, they're nursing excellent. Um, they're actually gonna be going to their new home here uh, tomorrow, actually. Leon, is the other baby in there? Yes. <laughs> what are you doing out here? Are you guys playing? Oh, oh. <laughs> They're playing. Come on. So let's go ahead and get you topped off. You might still be hungry. Wow, she didn't even take As you can see, he's doing good. Both of them are healthy and strong. They've been hanging out in the house for the last, uh, not even a week. She made it to about two weeks. They were about 16, 15 days old whenever I had to separate them. And we just decided that was gonna be for the best for all three of them health-wise. Is that good, are you happy? So we've had bottle babies in the house for the last few days. And the lady who is getting them, I figured since she's getting them that she probably would want to bottle raise them herself so that they can bond. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh my goodness. I just love the baby cuddles. Is that good? Are you nice and full now? You happy? Sheba, do you want to love her? <laughs> see Sheba in the background. <coughs> yes? Play and let you to sell the Skyward Sword. Yeah? Yes. Oh, you're just so sweet. Oh, yes. See, and because they're going to be bottle babies, they're going to be like extra sweet and affectionate. Can I see a hi? Oh. See, that's milk drunk. It's a milk drunk baby. Are you milk drunk? Are you ready for a nap now? <laughs> The lady who is actually getting both of them from us is actually the lady who got Mocha's baby from earlier this year, Carmel. So they are actually going to be with Carmel as his companions. 
which is really awesome because the herd is kind of staying together in a sense. But they're gonna be together. Um, and like I said, they'll be going likely tomorrow. We're gonna miss them, but I know that they're gonna be really happy and very loved. Thought I'd also show you guys something here at the house. Those are seed starts. And those are green beans. So we are actually starting up the garden. I haven't been able to get more of it mulched, unfortunately, so it's still only got a section of it mulched but uh, we are planning on getting started back in the garden. Nothing too uh, intense. It's going to be mostly just canning goods. Um, so a lot of green beans, gonna start some tomatoes, uh, okra. I forgot to start some banana peppers, but basically what I'm doing is I'm kind of uh, starting them in rotations so that I harvest a lot of it at the same time. First off, I've got, uh, I think this is Tenderette, then Blue Lake, Green Bean, and they're all bush, so I'm not gonna have a trellis, so I don't have to set up a trellis, so they're all bush. So I've got that, then I've got Kitchen King and tender green so there's tenderette and tender green so i'm trying out four new varieties and then i've got some okra that i've started here from last year's i, sa I saved some seeds my first time saving seeds i'm hoping that i saved them at the right time we'll see either i'm gonna get okra or i'm not gonna get okra either way i'll be fine but i thought some pickled okra would be really really good i like pickled okra and then basically we're gonna harvest and can and free is all we want. That way we have a year's worth of green beans and then anything that's extra, um, we'll sell at the farmer's market because now we are actually, our local feed store actually started having a monthly farmer's market, which is really, really awesome. So we can sell extra produce that we grow. Oh man, I already see a problem. See that, that's not good those well that one might still come that one might not produce any any leaves we'll have to see but they're doing pretty good they're all coming up right now so hopefully uh hopefully we get some green beans here soon but basically i'm starting them in uh intervals so that i can harvest everything when it's time also the strawberries that we dug up out of the strawberry and asparagus patch have been multiplying <laughs> So I've got, these are all of the strawberries that we dug up. So we've got seven strawberry plants that are fully established. And then they started sending off runners. So I've been potting up the runners. So the seven strawberries became like 20, I think. I think we've got 20 strawberry plants here. So I'm gonna just keep letting the runners set and try and get enough strawberries that we can start our new strawberry bed uh, unfortunately, the garden raised up. <clears throat> unfortunately, when the garden raised up, I think we might have killed the asparagus, which it's okay. It happened. We at least got to harvest some asparagus, so it's not ideal that we probably lost the asparagus, but we at least got to enjoy asparagus. Definitely the amount of asparagus that we that we spent as far as monetary wise. We didn't just spend the money on the plants and then never get a harvest. We actually planted them. It took a while for them to get established, but we did get to harvest as many asparagus as we would have bought at the store. It just took a little bit longer to get. Two of them, two of the asparagus plants did survive, I will say, but uh, that's fine because I was kind of contemplating on changing their location so it's not a total loss it's not a total loss with the shortages going on everywhere unfortunately our local uh grocery has not had any uh canning jars so you might notice in the background here i went on walmart.com because everywhere that i've been finding looking for canning jars they're just outrageously priced like i'm talking like 25 dollars to 75 dollars for a 12 case and that's normally supposed to only be like eight or nine dollars that's eight or nine dollars is the normal going rate for canning jars so i went on walmart.com on a whim and i happened to find them at their normal price 
So I went ahead and I ordered a stack. So we've got plenty of jars to get us started. And then I also went ahead and got, we got our first, here I'll show you guys. We got, this is our, uh, I don't know if I can see it. Can you see it? It's dark. I got a pressure canner. Presto, I think this is the 23 quart, which can fit, I believe, 12 pint jars. Cause that's what I'm canning and I'm canning in pints, 16 ounce pint jars. Uh, that seems to be what we tend to use at one meal. So we're gonna can some 16 ounce pint jars with green beans. Gonna try and get tomatoes. I'm hoping I have enough jars. We'll have to see, we'll have to see. I mean, I've got like, I think I've got like 60 jars. And then I also have some other jars as well that I've just kind of collected over the years. So we'll see, we'll see. It'll be our first time canning. Um, so that's pretty much what's going on in the garden right now is that we're going to just plant, plant uh, crops for canning for now. And then next year we'll start up the fresh garden once we have our uh, canning going on. So here is the state of the garden. As you can see, I got this section mulched and those sections are still tarped, but that's okay because that means I can take the time that I need to work on it and it not get overgrown and taken over. So I actually do need to mulch this a little bit deeper. You can see where a lot of the uh, grass is starting to come in and I've just been kind of working on coming back in with my rice knife and just kind of cutting them down to below the mulch so that they're less likely to come back and I'm just gonna have to come back in here with a thicker layer of mulch. But look, asparagus, asparagus. So two of them survived. So two of the asparagus survived. I'll take that, I'll take that. I was kind of, like I said, I was kind of contemplating on relocating the asparagus and strawberry bed and setting up a perennial bed here. So that's where the silky coop's gonna go. And then I would put a perennial bed here separate from this and just have this be the annual bed where we just grow things, uh, different things throughout the year. So I might actually just kind of sacrifice that surviving asparagus. I'll let it go until I plant because with it growing at different depths, the roots are way, way deep so they shouldn't interfere with anything that I'm growing. So I'll probably just let them go for a bit and then we're probably gonna have to bring in more soil here because this is still pretty low you can see the dark spots that's where it's actually flooded so even though I raised it back up it's still flooding so I think I'm gonna raise it we're gonna raise it up a little bit more make it all level or at least close to and then just have like have it grade downward away from the garden so that this area can be good with, and not flood and the water will kind of divert over here. We'll have to see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, we, all that clearing that we did, we still got the piles in the distance over here. Um, gotta burn those up soon. They've been drying out for a while, so it should be good now to go ahead and burn them. Just waiting for our land guy to get back with us on that. The apple tree is getting overgrown again. I gotta get in here and clear out all this. Look at this, that's an apple tree. It's doing good, it's still, it's still living, but I need to get in here and hit, cut, cut back all of this grass so that it can actually really come in. It's got a bunch of new growth coming in, that's good. I'm eager for winter when I can prune it though, because I did not prune it this year because I was waiting for it to go dormant, but I don't think, I don't, we don't get cold enough here for apple trees to go fully dormant. So I missed my window to try and prune it. I'm just gonna have to wait until it's cold and just prune it and see if that works. I think that's gonna be one of the obstacles that we run into in Florida. Look at this fat and sassy little thing. Hi. You're just, you're living your best life, aren't you, bud? Mom giving you everything that you could possibly need or want. Watch him, he's gonna run away. But look at how chunky he is. You're a fat little thing. Oh, what's going on with your eye? 
That's not good. You got you got tears, you got tears from flies. Are the flies getting to you, bud? I'm gonna have to watch that. That might be. I hope that's not anything serious. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Annabelle. Pretty mama. Shadow, you hanging out, bud? You doing good? He's been handling being by himself pretty good. Haven't had any issues with Shadow, thankfully. Look at how big Lexi's mango tree is getting. Get a little bit closer. It's not gonna do it justice, but you can see it's taller than me now. So you can kind of see it's terrible angle, but it's actually about one to two feet taller than me now, which is good. Cause once it gets to a certain height, then the animals can use it as a source of shade. Cause it just gets too hot here. I don't know how people run their animals, run their cattle in Florida in pastures with no shade. It's, it's just, it's way too hot. I couldn't do that to my animals. They've got to have shade. Annabelle, we've back there, because we took out the pepper bush that used to be the source of shade, but there's actually still, still quite a bit of shade. These pine trees are still providing shade for Annabelle and her calf, so they're still good, but I am gonna have to make a portable shade structure for them to rotate for the rest of the pasture, because you'll see there's, there's zero trees in this end of the pasture. But look at this. This used to be pepper bushes. Now it's all cleared and we've got good water flow. It's draining. That's good. That'll get it out of the wetlands and off of our property so that we're not flooding. I do got to get in here and mow some of this brush. I don't know how I'm going to do that because it's kind of slow. I'm probably just going to have to come in here with the bush hog attachment on the weed eater and clear it. You know, I have not checked on our bananas. I wonder how our bananas are doing. This is the state of things here. There's, we had a lot of rain and it has been flooding in the wetlands because the water, all the water from all the properties around us flow to us. But look at that. Ooh, they're looking good. Look at them. Look at them. Oh man, they're starting to like plump up and everything. Oh man, we're gonna get bananas. That's exciting. Like it's not like a tremendous amount, but we didn't get to enjoy the last bananas that came in on the trees. They never, they never plumped up and I don't think that the bananas were getting enough water. I probably picked them at the wrong time. But we're actually gonna get bananas. And I saw another one. Look at this, one of our ice cream Bananas. That was a dwarf Cavendish banana that you just saw. And here is an ice cream. Well, that's a kind of a pitiful bunch. I didn't fertilize them. I should have fertilized them. Probably would have gotten more. You can see where they've kind of been falling off. But we'll get, we'll get two bunches. That's pretty awesome. And these are the flowers. Actually about time for me to go ahead and cut this off so these can focus on growing. I don't leave the flower on the bananas because I want it to di divert energy to growing the bananas themselves. So I'll probably go ahead now that all the bananas have come in, I'm gonna go ahead and probably cut that flower so that they can grow. I would say though that the bananas are doing really good here. They really like this spot. I can't remember, I can't I always forget what it's called. There's a concept of two different types, like where the garden is mulched and the grass starts. That little in-between area, there is something about that area where plants tend to thrive. I need to mow the orchard. It is getting overgrown out here, but that's okay not so overgrown. I can mow out here. I actually got to get, we got four more fruit trees that I haven't planted out here yet. We got two peach trees and two plum trees and this apple tree is dead. So I'm going to go ahead and actually remove this and use the hole for that for one of the fruit trees, but everything is doing really good. Can't really see it. There's a mulberry. There's a mulberry. 
or not a mulberry, a fig. Did I say fig? mulberry? <laughs> but the figs are doing great. They're actually putting out new growth. Um, oh, look, there's a baby fig coming in. Little tiny baby fig. I'll start getting some figs soon. I wonder how the cherry tree, cherry tree looks like it's doing really good. Oh, we got some cherries coming in. I plucked off all the blossoms I could whenever I first planted it, just so that it would establish. And I think it established and now it's starting to produce. I'm gonna go ahead and let it just fruit. And here's the mulberry. It's gonna grow. I'm wondering if I could train it to grow because I want these fruit trees because this will ultimately eventually be where we run our meat chickens. We'll run them in between the rows of the fruit trees so they can fertilize the ground and utilize the shade of the fruit trees. So I really want the fruit trees to kind of stretch, branch out, stretch out and fan out and shade the paths in between the rows so that they have shade. I mean, we have, we put tarps over top of the uh, chicken tractor so that they have shade. But if you can put another, have them be running under another layer of shade, it's just that much cooler. I want them to be comfortable. I don't want them to be overheating. I do have some sad news, however. My, uh, as you can see, my, uh, my rubber boots finally, finally died. This is the, this is the, let's see, you can see where, see the hole. And it's doing that on the other one too, which is, Really disappointing because these were actually lasting pretty good. I just need to. I just need to. I need to get some nice, nice rubber boots. Uh, I guess Muck Brand. Muck Brand's gonna be the uh, the best route. I think those are the most durable. I. 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 I, I these probably would have lasted me a lot longer if it was just something that I wore every so often to like go work in the garden. But I literally wear them everywhere every day in the pasture to do everything because it just gets wet in Florida and I just need to I need, I need to just bite the bullet and do it <laughs> Davis was like you've bought four pairs by the time you bought those four pairs and wore those four pairs out you've spent the same amount of money you would have if you would have just gotten the muck brand and I'm not cheap but I feel bad spending that kind of money on boots. But I, 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 I just need to do it. I just need to do it because I, I wear them every day. And like he said, I've gone through four pairs and I've spent that much. So I need to just get them. I just need to do it. Just, just do it. Figured you guys might want to see a little update on the goats, especially Salem, given his little predicament, his little health concerns. And he is doing good. He's doing good. Hi, handsome boy. Where's my baby? Hi, Salem. Oh, hi, Mocha. Hi, Sophie. Sophie lost some weight when she had when, with her babies, taking care of them. But she's doing good. She's recovering, working on getting her weight up. And then Mr. Salem. Hi, sweetheart. You can see his be his belly's still hanging a little low, but I don't think it's hanging quite as low as it was originally. Oh, but he's still just as sweet. Yes, you are, baby. And little Miss Juniper's doing good. Hi, Mocha. Sophie, you can't eat my jeans. That's that's not what you can eat. You can't eat that. Juniper, come here. Come here. Come here. Let me love you. There's the sweet girl, yes. Come here, baby. Here, stand up. Let me just pet you. I know, I know. I just wanna pet you. You will warm up to us. Rosie over there has been doing really, really good. She actually, I've actually been able to pet Rosie while we feed them. So I've actually been petting her more and she's been allowing it shadow as well. Oh my gosh, it's so humid and there's like zero breeze. I'm sweating like crazy, but Rosie's kind of warming up. She's still very wary of us. 
but she'll eat food out of my hand and she'll let me pet her when she's eating. But other than that, she doesn't really want to be handled or touched. Oh, look at these two cuties. Yes. You guys are so cute. Juniper. Look at that pretty girl. Oh, I know, you're a handsome boy too, Salem. And you're a pretty girl, yes. Yeah. You're so pretty girl. Oh, what are you doing? Huh? That's so cool. Yes. See, I can pet you. I'll pet you. Because you love it. I love listening to Juniper bleat. She, it's like a hum. I Jojo get in the lovins. Yes. He's always got hair right here. Got hay right here behind his horn. Yes, you just always got hay right behind your horns. You're such a handsome boy. Mocha, you're looking so good. Look at how good Mocha is looking. She's filled out so beautifully. Yes, yeah, stretch your stuff, mama. <laughs> so Mocha's doing good as you can see. So the goats are doing pretty good. Salem, he's still a little bit anemic. I gotta get him another iron shot to help. But he, I think he's I think he's doing good. He's recovering. His belly is not as pot bellied as it was. Huh, you're I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yes. <laughs>